No amount of self-improvement can make up for a lack of self-acceptance. Um, that quote hit me. I am right now doing some pre-work for a yoga teacher training and my yoga teacher said that quote and it really hit hard because there's a self-improvement journey of trying to be something you are not and in the end just being disappointed once again. Longing for some distant, imaginary, idealized version of self. A lot of the times we find problems in ourselves, we try to improve ourselves, we are hard on ourselves in our day-to-day -day life, and we think this is normal, but it a lot of the times comes from a lack of self-acceptance. If your friend was being hard on you or telling you aspects of yourself that you need to change on a constant basis, you probably wouldn't want to be around them. Also, it is easy to find problems with our current realities if we do not accept where we are. And not being able to accept where one is can sometimes, once again, circle back to that lack of self-acceptance because maybe I don't accept the decisions that I made in the past that have led me here or like resentment towards self. I resent being here right now. So then that just causes um, self-hatred. And I think the opposite, I think in a way, love is presence. Love is being present with someone 100% without distractions. And how often are we present with ourselves? How often am I present with myself? How often are you present with yourself? Or are you always distracted? Like, are you willing to spend quality time with yourself? And distractions are also a leading cause of this. We distract ourselves because if we were to accept a reality, the next step would be radical change. If we were to accept the world for the mess that we've made it, we would first have to see it for what it is. And if we saw it for what it was, we would see that we need radical change to actually live in alignment with nature. So acceptance can be painful because if acceptance requires you to either change something because you actually see it for what it is now or it causes you to surrender because you realize that this whole time, let's say you were trying to change yourself and there's nothing to change and... Now you just have to surrender to yourself and your heart and living beyond the mind. Um, yeah, so no amount of self-acceptance, no, sorry, no amount of self-improvement can make up for a lack of self-acceptance. Um, and it will... It is also easy to find problems and flaws within others if you are always used to looking for those flaws within yourself. But once you fully embrace yourself, radical acceptance of yourself, you know what, this is my challenge to you actually, to radically accept yourself. Like, open your arms, big embrace. I don't know who you are, how you are, but... What would that look like? What would that look like to radically accept yourself? How would you be living? What would you be doing? Oh my goodness, this makes me excited. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry. No, I'm joking. Um, so, what would it look like to accept yourself? I, in my answer, that would be to be in the present moment and to just... Stop holding 
myself back, you know? Stop holding myself back. In those moments that I pull away out of fear and judgment and more of judgment for myself than from others, in those moments, just be like, you know what? I This is in alignment with myself, so I'm going to do it because me holding back is actually not who I am and not this essence that I am trying to embody, literally. And once we all accept ourselves, everyone else's flaws will literally be irrelevant. Obviously, there are cases when other people can be toxic, but self-acceptance allows you to see those toxic flaws without internalizing that, and then you just walk the other way without judging the person. That's literally... Oh my gosh. I mean, take what I say with a grain of salt, but like, judging others, like, someone told me this the other day, I don't know who told me this, but I thought it was cool, that a lot of times we overthink, oh, it was my friend, my friend, we overthink because of a lack of action. So maybe you're ruminating because you didn't do something or you didn't like solve something, so you're overthinking because something was affecting you. So it's like, okay, you can judge someone for treating some like treating you poorly, for example. But someone who's like truly grounded in themselves, truly accepting themselves, will not judge that person. They will see them like in love, like out of love, like in the loving perspective, but they will also protect themselves and distance themselves from that situation instead of um, perpetuating it and staying in it and then continuing to just judge the person. Because at that point, it's like, why are you keeping yourself in that situation? I'm actually getting excited making this video um, because self acceptance is needed. It is needed and rejection the opposite we know the opposite of acceptance is rejection and literally what do you do when you reject someone subconsciously or consciously you are distracted you look away you go on your phone you don't answer or you just don't listen to what they're saying or you judge them. Do you do these things to yourself? Do you do these things to yourself is what I am asking. And obviously the concept of self, I could say, is also an illusion. But it's this is where the issue occurs. You have your... Oh my gosh, okay. This is like where the video is ending, but this is the most important part. You have your soul your heart, your true essence, radiating this light that wants to shine, that wants to shine to the world. And everyone wants to see the light, but then, so there's this huge light, right? But then you have the ego, the sense of self, and it's just like a curtain that just covers it. So there, your light is gone. It's just poof, vanished. Because the ego is unable to accept the infinite, the infinite potential of the light and the judgments and the risks of it. But the only risk truly is hiding the light. So we need to pull back the curtain, accept your light and just drop the rest of it. Drop the BS. And this is the challenge. This is, what day is it? Today is March 10th, okay? This is going to be the Easter challenge I have for you guys, okay? March 10th until Easter. Hopefully for the rest of your life. Accept yourself. Shine your light. Be reborn. And, you know, remove the curtain. Like, covering the light of your heart. The light of your consciousness. Just get rid of it. And just see. Just see, you know? See what happens. Just follow the light. Follow your heart. And 
this is I'm trying to do this challenge too like don't make decisions through your mind just like see one month making decisions just based on your instinct or your heart your heart because your instinct could be off but like your heart this deep center of wisdom the heart is is the wisest you know in my opinion because the heart knows what cannot be seen the heart has ancient knowledge you have ancient knowledge inside of you your mind does not have ancient knowledge your mind only has knowledge of your lifetime but your body everything your mind can access that knowledge yes it can but with that knowledge you don't have reasoning behind it you just know it without knowing why that's a whole separate tangent but yes radical self-acceptance open your arms to yourself yeah goodbye namaste have an amazing week have an amazing easter have an amazing march um i am going to be in costa rica very very soon to get yoga certified and i might document some some um things i learned maybe i'll make a few videos over there and so stay tuned for that and i will keep posting on here so